Tiao Coffee Three in One Kaping Barako with Malunggay. Of course, we also have uh, Orange Malunggay Orange Iced Tea and HD Guya Bana Drink. Ang dati nating Iced Tea and Orange Juice may bago na. May Malunggay, Malunggay Iced Tea and Malunggay Orange Litro Pack. Available at Mercury Drug, South Supermarket, Robinson Supermarket, LCC, Rustan Supermarket, Lazada and Shopee. For those who want to be the sellers, please email sales at orange.com.ph. And now, Patrick, we want to throw in the first question already. How are you doing right now, Everett? Uh, we always ask this uh, before we start a show. What is 2020 for you? What does it mean for you? And uh, how did this pandemic teach you things? Um, after all, I'm, I'm okay here. Um, it's our off season, so not that busy. Um, just taking time to to rest and to be ready for the following season. Uh, obviously, last year, 2020 was, I think, difficult and um, very new to me and to everybody else. So it's something that I think um, nobody ever experienced before. So um, you know, just had to. Um, make do of what I have of you know what's there. You know, I get the situation is out of my control. You know, the COVID situation mm -hmm. out of our control. So we just um try to do things um that is under under our control, and you know to make the best of the situation. Okay, Patrick, you are in Thailand right now. Which which city again? Yeah, uh, Tupanburi city. Okay, how how is uh the situation there um is it uh, is, is the pandemic still around uh, can people walk normally what is this, what is the scenario in your area i'm super worried it's okay you know our cases here i believe the last time i checked was around uh, six or seven so it's very little it's in the capital which is bangkok that's where a lot of the cases come from so you know i'm trying to stay put here we're trying to stay put in it's fun with it's safer, the people, and I don't know, it's, it's, there's not too much um, infected people here. And we wish you all safety as always. And uh, please uh, uh, stay safe in your area. Belay? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, Ernest didn't introduce Patrick because he probably needs no introduction. You know? A lot of young kids, especially goalkeepers, um, look up yeah. to him. You know that um, it's you know Filipino world class goalkeeping is you know it's a rarity. So, uh, first off, like Patrick, we're super proud of you and for everything that you've accomplished over the past few years. The decision really t that you took to um, go out and spread your wings in Thailand, and you know you you consistently you know you signed a new contract. Uh, you renewed with Sufanburi. That's that's right. Yeah, yeah. I just um, it's safe to say, it's safe to to tell the public already. I did. Um, pending my, I'm gonna have a medical test next week, so that should be not a, that should be no problem. And when I pass that medical test, then it's gonna be official. Yay! Congratulations. Sorry, is it not official yet, pala? <laughs> but you know, I mean, you're still you're you're still there. Um. So, but actually, I wanted to take it back first before we ask more questions about your professional career. I wanted to take it back to your roots uh, just to show everyone like the pathway that you took to get to where you are right now, like um, where you started playing, when you started playing, um, and how you made it from the semi-pros to the pros. Uh, but I thank you for, for your kind words. Um, going back to your question, you know, uh, I started to play in the Salle du Bell. You know, that's where uh, elementary, uh, when I was elementary school, I was part of the varsity team. So I played in, in a lot of the local competitions at that, back, back at the time, uh, which was RIFA, which was Alaska Cup, um, all of these tournaments. I'm not sure if they're still, um, you know, operating right now. But, um, and then I moved to high school for the UAP juniors and eventually to college to, uh, to the UAP as well. So I played for the Sal again. And I played for five years for the LSU. And then after that, I moved, I moved on to the affiliated club, which was Green Argus United um, in the UFL. At that time, it was called UFL. It was, um, it was a semi-pro semi -pro league. 
that time, but it was really um, a good a good uh, platform for me to play. The level was was really good, and a lot of the national team players also were playing at that competition. So it was good to use that as a stepping stone. You know, so I moved to three other clubs in the in the USL, which turned out to be the PSL after a few years, and then. You know, I got I got called up to the national team as well during the process, and then because of that, um, that's where I garnered interest from abroad, from Thailand right now, and thankfully I was able to um, to take advantage of of my opportunity last 2019 to come here. Nice. So, um, you said you're not sure Rifa and Alaska Cup. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think Alaska Cup's still running and Rifa's still running. I yeah, think even Rifa's. Yeah, Reef is still doing like even on online competitions now, especially I've seen a lot for the girls. Um, yeah, so I mean it's also good for the kids playing now in Rifa, not only for the young boys, but also for the young girls to see that um a player such as you started in that level, um, made it all the way up, you know, really went through the pathway that be available to us in the Philippines and was able to make it um internationally. So I know that the situation now in terms of football in the Philippines is so different from back then in our in our time. I don't know if it's a little bit batch. Natin. <laughs> um, no, but it's a little bit. um was your mindset always for playing professional or you know did it come later on? Pa? Uh, it came later on for sure because, like what you said, uh, at that time, I think UAP was the highest level of competitiveness in the Philippines football-wise before. There was there was no uh, national league. Um, obviously, there's no opportunity for, for livelihood um, uh, with football before, you know. So just I think when I got the scholarship from uh, for La Salle, that was really, you know, I think the the best benefit maybe that you could have gotten. Um, with football at that time, but I was also lucky that that was 2008. If I'm not mistaken, that the national team, you know, the what they call the miracle in Hanoi, then that really um, brought Philippines um, all the way up, all the way up, you know, and uh, it was perfect because I was just about to graduate at the time, so they would catch the wave, you know, when the new professional league was established, you know, opportunities for players like me um, were presented. You know, to to have it as a livelihood, have it as a job. So yeah, there, there was a lot of luck involved also. But for sure, it was later on. I didn't really plan on professional football at very young, very young age. Yeah, it's definitely really timing. But I think in your case, like I'm um, watching you as a player from um, UAAP, then moving on later to UFL. Like, there's this constant improvement and. I know like you are one of the hardest workers um in that I've seen in the UFL PFL and not because of uh, a source that is very close to you that I know um but because I've seen it also for myself so um said that you have to really push yourselves to do all the extra training to do all the hard work behind this Yeah um I was not really the most talented every time in the national team I I was number two, number three most of the time. Um, so I had to really work hard because I was not the most, like I said, I was not the most talented to be, to be the number one right away or to be successful right away. So I had to be patient. Also, I had to be hardworking. I think. So yeah, it's, it's not a secret. I think everybody knows that you need to you need to work hard to be successful. There's no secret formula or anything. You need to work hard and be patient and stay committed. You know, that's, that that that's um my my opinion, and I think it's really a good way to to go. Yeah, Patrick, you know, I yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, no, I, go I just ahead. wanted no, to sorry, em- yeah, em- I just wanted to emphasize that just because if we do have a lot of young kids watching, like especially our YFL kids watching, I just wanted to show them like you know that. You, you really can put in the hard work and you really can improve because of your hard work. It's not like um, always just um, the talent, the God-given talent that you have in the beginning and you can still um, 
achieve what you want to achieve. So I just want to emphasize that was, uh, I think Patrick's like the perfect example perfect for example. this, like what, yeah, what hard work can get you. So yeah, go ahead, Pops. Well, um, it's nice, uh, Pat, I just wanted to ask, no, um, it's nice to talk to a uh, Sobel alumni, uh, though I didn't come from there, my children came from there. And uh, okay. I just want to throw, throw back question. Um, were you really um, all had your mindset to become a goalkeeper or did you play any other position prior to that? Uh, initially, I was really a goalkeeper, you know, when I started playing when I was very young. And then, you know, at the grassroots level, when you're a goalkeeper, it sometimes can be very boring because the games are always, you know, it's either you're winning a lot or you're losing a lot. So it's a little bit boring. It got boring for a few years for me. So I wanted to play in a different position, which I did for around um, three to four years, you know, and eventually um, I realized that, you know, if I want to make it far, if I want to be, so I think the goalkeeper position is a good position for me. And, you know, it's also the position where there's the least uh, competition, you know, because there's, yeah, so many good, true. there's so many good strikers, so many good uh, midfielders and everything. So if you, if a goalkeeper does not so much, and also my physical attributes at the time were, were um, very advantageous for a goalkeeper. I was quite tall. I was quite a tall kid, so I thought that yeah, it would be would be best to be goalkeeper. So then another good. another thing. How did you survive uh, Hans Peter Smith or HPS? Yo, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, it's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of mine. Though, good friend of mine. <laughs> after the, after this point, I don't know. I have no idea how, but I did. <laughs> so and that was uh, eight years or nine years. I'm not sure because that was high school and college. Combined, so you know, eventually, uh, I think at that during my college time, a lot of people also said that he mellowed down until this. So I think I was lucky that that was the case. But you know, you get used to it. You you get the discipline that that he instills. You get the point. You know, he doesn't you know do those stuff. I'm sure that things that people hear doesn't do those stuff for no reason whatsoever. It's for a reason, and you know, it will be it will it will work for you for your character eventually. Okay. okay, and then my last, uh, my last question. Okay, I hope you don't mind. Have you ever stopped a banana kick? <laughs> oh, I think I, I believe I did. <laughs> I believe I did. So, okay, um, thank you so much, Patrick. That's a good question, <laughs> Patrick. Uh, I just want to follow up with uh, Coach Hans. Okay, um, um, give us the story. I mean, give us a story. You, you've been with him for about eight years. You, you said and. Tell us about the, the first time that you encountered him. The, the first time that you that you uh, uh, we love Coach Hans. Now we love Coach Hans, but give us a story what, when you, on your first days with Coach Hans. I don't really remember my first day, but you know when I went to to high school training for the first time, he had a reputation already that you know he's really a disciplinarian. That he's really the training sessions are going to be hard, very physically demanding. So. You know, when when um, I started training for him, that's exactly what, what happened. And it was really, you know, difficult uh, physically, but that really also translated into your mental um, ability to with, withstand, you know, um, challenges, these trials like that. And of course, you have to be fit also as the, as the level of football goes up. So um, I guess if you have a perspective that way, then you will be able to bear with it. You know, but if you think of it in a bad way, that it's just um, being a bad guy, then obviously it's not gonna work out. Okay, uh, give us one story like, that you find what Coach Hans did funny or whatever. Give us one story. Uh, what is that on your mind right now? What, what is that on your uh, mind? Right now? There's a lot, but I can remember, you know, probably one time when I was late in the training session, you know, and punctuality is such an important thing for him. So he just made me run the whole training and I was, you know, I was really upset. But eventually later on, I realized that, you know, this, that what he made me do really um, became a benefit for me. You know, I realized that, you know, I have to respect other people's time. I have to be punctual and, you know, I have to, I have to treat the sport seriously. If I cannot be in training session on time, then how can you expect to be successful? You know, that's just a small thing. So. Um, at start, yeah, you know, you, you, you don't understand right away, you know, you get emotional, you get really upset because it's not how um, normally other people would, 
would, would react or would do things. But like what I said, you know, he has a different, um, like tough love, you know, I think that's the best, best word to describe it. Like he always gives tough love. You just have to have that perspective on it. And, and most of the players that were under him become his sons in the long run. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> after being with, under him for a long time, then there's, yeah, there's a connection there for sure. Ivan, you have a question? Yes. Okay, so Pat, you came to La Salle in college at the time when the UAP soccer, UAP football was all about UP and FPU. But during your time, that was a time that the Ateneo La Salle rivalry suddenly went up in the, the foot of So talk about being being among the so called trailblazers of this ongoing Ateneo La Salle rivalry in football. I, that, was, that was fun, you know. Um, like what you said, those FAU and UP who were always in the finals were always, you know, in the top two or top three. So when you play against Ateneo, that's kind of like our final of the season. You know, there's a lot of people watching all the time, a lot of hype um, before the match. And yeah, it was fun. You know, at, at start, there was a lot of fighting. You know, you, you get carried away with your emotions, as I said. But in the last two or three years, you know, actually most of the Ateneo, some of the Ateneo players became my friends. You know, you just start to enjoy and relish the, the competition and the rivalry, but you don't take it on a personal level. Um, but yeah, at, at, at the first the first two years, you know, I think everybody goes to the stage when you're, you're just young and you're a bit uh, hot-headed and, you know, you tend to fight the fans with the players, but you realize it's not the way to go and this, you cannot uh, disrespect the sport also that way. So eventually I just enjoy playing with, with uh, in the rivalry with other people watching and you know, I became actually friends with, with um, a number of the Ateneo players. Patrick, right, I hope so you don't mind. I, if I can invite you. Oh, sorry, sorry, Ivan. Uh, we have a duel that's uh, happening. When the pandemic's over, maybe you can join us for the duel. It's a La Sala Ateneo thing. It's a football uh, alumni. Bawal team. yung professional. Ah, bawal ba? Oh, pag nag-retire ka na. <laughs> yeah, bawal yeah, yung yeah, professional <laughs> dyan. Hule, hule. Kinokontrata na, kinokontrata na ni Ivan. No, no. Ang likot pa. Okay, Ivan, sorry, say, go ahead. <laughs> Going for the long term. <laughs> Pero pag nakuha mo naman yan, wala makakalusot. <laughs> Oo, oh, wala. <laughs> Ivan, sige, pagpatuloy mo. Hindi, <laughs> ikaw kayo lang kayo muna. Gusto ko lang muna lang naman. Okay, I think we're done with the, the, the college ranks. Uh, so now we're moving up forward to the UFL. So I saw here that before you joined Gao, you were still you still signed up with Pachanga. So what's the story about Pachanga then? Yeah, yeah, I actually played one tournament for Pachanga. It was I forgot what the name of the competition was. Uh, Suzuki Club Championship. Um I played for Pachanga and Unfortunately, I couldn't continue because the UAP didn't allow um, simultaneous participation um, by a player in a uh, professional league or the UAP. So I had to stop. And then um, Coach Hans just really told me to just go to Green Archers. So he forced me to just uh, go to Green Archers instead. So that's why I ended up in Green Archers after But despite this short run, you still got to team up with Freddy Gonzalez. And we know no Freddy Gonzalez, a legend before the Ascals. Can you talk about seeing Freddy Gonzalez with you in one team, in one club? Um, you know, unfortunately, Freddy at that time, it was the early Pachanga days. He was an acting manager. He didn't play yet. When I left, when I left Pachanga, I think that's when he started to play. So... Unfortunately, I was not able to play with him. I was able to play with a lot of the other players, you know, from Bachanga, like uh, Yves Ashima was there, um, Ed Maliari, Selu, um, who else? There are, there are a lot of other players. Anto? Parang sila, Anto was there, no? No, Anto was towards the later, later stages, yeah. When it became Bachanga Diliman. No, it was, right. Yeah, it, it was... It was Ed, Ed Maliari, it was Selu, it was um, Al who was there. Eve. So these people were the ones that I, I played with. Um, the coach was Juan Cotillas. 
or Pachanga. You know, so that was the time. And then, mm-hmm. fortunately, I had to stop to play for Pachanga because I was playing UAP. And then I wanted to come back because they were, you know, they put a lot of also investment in the team and they got really a lot of good players. But then, you know, coach has forced me to go to Hurricane <laughs> Sayang. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ako, uh, Pep, si, si Coach Hans daw ang ano, <laughs> ang pumigil. Of course, of course. But Pep, si yung mic mo, yung, yung mic mo, Pep. No, it's amazing, Patrick, no, to hear the name of uh, Coach Juan Cutillas. Because he was our yeah. coach way back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So quite, it's um, nice to hear that he's, uh, you know, that you you went through him. Yeah, he was quite old already when he was my coach. So I mean, yeah, I could imagine. Yeah. He was really I old when he was. And then Peps, now now I mic, now I mic, now. Ah, what were you saying? Hello. Na na wala si Peps, na wala. Pa- uh, parang uh, he was quite old before, pa. Na na wala mic. Lang when he coached uh, you. Yeah. He was really yeah, was really old at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So um you left off like you were playing for Green Archers. Now you're playing in Thailand. Um Shamper, you know, we're really starved for sports right now. But can you share with us yung, the experience of playing throughout the pandemic? How was it with like were there fans in the stadium? How's the situation there? Um last season, you know, we were very lucky because when when the Of course, we had a hold during the March to May. That was the lockdown. And then when, when the Thai League resumed during September, you know, fans were allowed inside. We were playing with, uh, with fans in the stadium. Wow. There were quite a lot of fans. Um, of course, not full capacity, but around 50%, which is anyway the normal uh, attendance in a game. So if the stadium is... is 50% is still good. Huh? 50% is good. Then nothing. It's, a, it's, no? so, it's so good. Uh, if the stadium is if the stadium is ten thousand, so there's like five thousand, four thousand people. So it's, it's still really good, and um, you know we were playing um, home in a way. We were still traveling to different cities, and yeah, you know it's something that uh, I was really I was really happy and excited about because this last season was actually my first full season um, in the Thai league. So be able to experience that whole year, you know, traveling or being at home or going here and there and seeing the new stadium that I haven't been to last year was a really good experience. And, you know, I think the, the, the Federation of Thailand, you know, credit to them, they're very organized. They followed all the safety protocols. Um, there was um, probably three weeks that they... they Um, this allowed the fans again to come to the stadium. That was after New Year because there was a little bit of a spike again. But after three weeks, they opened it again. So we played with fans again for the last uh, five games. And the very last game that we played, there was like 9,000 people. It was a really big game. And 9,000 sure, nakakain get? I know, sure right? Follow, I'm pretty sure they didn't follow the, the protocol. So 50% was allowed. But you know, it was really such a big game. People oh, from, yeah. Supanburi, you really wanted to watch because it was, you know, if we lost the game, then we would have done another division too, which was the first, which will be the first time ever in the club. And then, if we stayed in Division One, which is what everybody wanted, uh, and it would have been good. So there's a lot of people watching, and you know, thank, thankfully we won the game. It was really a big celebration at the end. But yeah, it was one of the best experiences of my life, really. Yeah. I I actually watched that game because um someone was promoting it highly, but you know it was <laughs> you had a few amazing saves there. But you know when I watch in the games yeah. um mm-hmm. of you and of there's another Patrick <laughs> playing there. Patrick Reichel plays with you, of course. Um, and to see the fans, you know, holding the Philippine flag, you know, of course in support of you guys. Uh, is very like you know heartwarming because it yeah. really shows um uh, you're representing us well um you're making us all proud. Uh, I just wanted to ask also your experience like with the fans in Sufanburi. Is it like can you do you have a hard time going around? Do you get recognized and stopped a lot? How how is it like playing professional there? All the fans are amazing. You know they're so nice. 
um, you know, I don't get the paparazzi treatment, you know, it's not like that. But, you know, you get a few selfies, photos here and there when you go to the mall, but they're all very friendly, they're all very warm. And like what you said, you know, with the Philippine flag, I didn't even, you know, tell anybody about that or ask anybody to do that. It's just that they just recognize that you're from the Philippines. They recognize that, you know, you will be happy if you see the flag and you'll feel at home if you see at least the flag. And you know, they do it out of their own will, uh, with their own initiative. So that just that speaks for how they are, you know. And even when we when we lose badly, they don't have any um, harsh words to say to the players. You know, it's different, like Indonesia and Malaysia. It's a bit more of an ultra ultra uh, treatment where it's a bit wild, you know. It's still good, you know. It's also a good way. But in Thailand, it's more it's like a warmer reception, like more friends. Pat, yeah. Uh, oh. okay, go ahead. Okay, Patrick. Um, you you said about uh, of course you're you're interacting with fans. What are the protocols there in in, uh, in fan interaction right now? Um, they just have to wear a mask. Um, you, you can you they, they can allow to have selfies with you. Yes, as long yes, as they but, have masks. Yeah, but you know, of course, uh, for the past. A few months, you know, I just didn't. Um, I just went straight to the bus, you know. I I I, I know that they understand, so I didn't want to risk anything. Some players, you know, they would really go to the fans, which is okay, you know. But I just didn't want to risk anything, uh, except for the last game. The last game was just really, was just really a big celebration. So you know, I, I took the time to to um, spend a little bit more time with the fans at the last game. But prior to that, you know, I just tried to be safe, and I. I limited the interaction with the fans. I, I'm sure they understand anyway. All right. Be- Bella, what you were saying? Huh? Oh, no. I was just um okay. curious yung sa, yung sa fan culture. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, at some point, like something dictates the way the fans act, the way the fans support, or the way the, they are very negative or positive towards the team and the players. I was just curious where you thought this would come from. Would it come from the club culture talaga and the management and the players of the club? Or just the generally the people are just easygoing and just very supportive fans? I think the people, you know, um, even if you take away football, you know, I think the Thai people are just really, just really warm and very nice. Um, it reminds me actually of people from, uh, let's say, Bacolod province, where in, it's not like Manila, you know, everybody's just warm, everybody's just nice, everybody's just really chill. It's more the same here. So they 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 translate that to their support to the team, you know. They're still passionate, don't get me wrong, they're still very, very passionate. Um, but not in a, not in a negative way or not in a, a provoking way. You know, they're very passionate, they support the players, but they're also understanding and you know, they're they're very uh, warm, very Okay, it's just for me, you know, interesting. Parang um sometimes when I'm looking at I I'm I'm a comment section reader. <laughs> it starts to become very negative and very toxic. And you know, I just would like to know how yeah. we can kind of integrate or teach this culture. Or you know, it's hard to teach the culture, but you know, how can we um get this <laughs> positivity to radiate to their fans? Because so, it's not only in like you know football, like all around like it's just becoming a negative culture uh, and it's kind of scary and hopefully it's something that we can adapt from um, those type of fans now you know let's be as supportive as we can <laughs> oh sorry Ivan go ahead you're I just want to I just want to also um, sorry I want to comment on that what Bella said you know it's 100% true and I don't know if you guys know but I think last week the Premier League even um, boycotted they did a boycott on social media because of online abuse. You know, they, they stopped all interactions on social media, all the players, all the, the league and everything. Because of, you know, it's just too much sometimes for the fans just because they can just type away and they just say whatever they want to say. And of course, the players, the players, the coaches, or, or whoever the subject is, just the human beings, they still get hurt. They still have emotions. So, yeah, I mean, there's nothing good that comes out of it. And I think, I think that's not just in the Philippines, but everywhere in the world. Even here in Thailand, there's still some, uh, especially to the coach. I think in our club, it's more to the coach. You know, sometimes I feel bad towards the coach. 
that's why they 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 drag their anger too to the coach. So um, yeah, you know, it's a good it's a good point, and I hope that you know many people become more aware, you know, of the social media. Yeah, keyboard warriors are everywhere right now. But uh, Ivan, all right. So I push. Human, you are when you arrive in Thailand, you are not among those who are so called shell shocked about upon arriving in a foreign land because you once got to play in a foreign land to your stint with Global Makati in the AFC Cup. So how did that the AFC Cup stint prepare you to to have this stint abroad? Yeah, in the AFC Cup and uh, obviously the Ascals, you know, playing for Ascals for a few games that really helped me because I knew yeah. that the level abroad is Is, you know a bit higher than the Philippines. It's, the game is much faster, um, and there are lots of much better players. Um, and you know there are also fans in the stadium watching. So at least I was able to come in here with with that experience. And I didn't get um, like what you said. I didn't get shell shocked with with a lot number of people watching me with, with the level of play. You know I really expected it already. So I was able to to adjust. My performance as if to adapt my, you know, my mental preparation for that, and yeah, that really helped. So that that um, game that I played with the national team and with global. All right. Okay, pa- Patrick. Uh, of course, uh, we have our surprises when whenever we go to a different country, and hence you're gonna be you're working in another country as well. What was that one thing that you said? Hey, I didn't expect this moment. Uh, when you came to Thailand, probably the language. You know, I didn't expect that nobody was speaking, not even a little bit of English here. Okay. So difficult. I think in Bangkok it's okay. You know, I've been to Thailand before, but I've been only in Bangkok, and in Bangkok, you know, they're they're quite quite okay with English. But here in Subang Buri, obviously this is a problem. Um, in in uh, Thailand, then the English is really very very low. Almost nothing. So not even one word, two words. Wow. They can't understand. So I had to try to learn, you know, the simple words to be able to communicate with, to buy food, to be able to, you know, <laughs> no, no spicy, direct... no spicy food. Yeah, yeah, that's those <laughs> phrases. No spicy food. Uh, even to count, I need. I, now I, I can count. Uh, I can count inside now. You know, uh, to one million. I, whenever I I buy stuff or I ask stuff, I can count. I can say also. I can speak a little bit also of Thai. So, um, I had to adjust that really fast because it's so difficult here. Yeah, but we're lucky now that the technology. <laughs> yeah, Google Translate. Yeah. Yeah, there's Google, Google Translate. Translate. <laughs> um. Okay. So, yeah, go, what's go been ahead, your favorite? Ahead. What's been your favorite food there in Sipanburi and Thailand? Or the. Hmm. But the pork barbecue here, they call it muyang, but it's it's grilled. It's grilled oh, pork. Yeah, you know, grilled pork. Grilled yeah. pork. It's like I think pork neck. I'm not mistaken. It's really yummy. It's good, delicious. Yeah. How about And, which? I know you guys cook, but which food do you miss the most from home? I miss I miss eating kare kare because this is the food that Tasha cannot uh, cook. Um, so I hope to. We're trying to look for Filipino restaurants around. Hopefully, we can try. Now, I think there is some in Bangkok, but right now it's not just smart to go there. So I have to wait a little bit. But yeah, I'm craving for that food. That's that's been my favorite ever since, you know, even before I went here. I haven't had that yeah. for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would miss seasick. <laughs> yeah, gone for a long time. Yeah, so hard. Want. There's so many. There's so, so many. <laughs> But but would you trade Filipino food for Thai right now, or w- which would you which would you rather have? I still have Filipino food, 100%. Yeah, it's, it, so it's Thai food is super good. <laughs> but with Thai food, maraming spicy. There's so many spicy yeah. Thai food, yeah, yeah. so you have to communicate well on the spiciness level of Thai food. Yeah, it's really spicy. But actually, a lot of the Thai food are. In, in a Filipino um, cuisine as well, like a fried chicken and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, earlier, I think Ernest asked uh, asked me, and I said we can. Well, we can use this time to ask um, Patrick uh, 
about your contract. I don't know if we can ask you about uh, how long did you extend for? I extended for one year, so that's June 2021 to May 2023. Uh, 2022, sorry. 2022, sorry. <laughs> um, with the option to extend for another year. Wow. I, I believe the option is the club discretion. So Galing. Actually, uh, yeah. actually, basically just one year, you know. Yeah. More Thai food for you then. <laughs> <laughs> do you, I'll, be, I'll be here for one more year. Parang at home na at home na siya sa Sufan Buri. So do you have um, an agent handling that for you or do you handle yeah. it directly? I have an agent. Actually, the agent that I that I am with since I got here is affiliated with the Scott Cooper, the Adkal's head coach. Oh. Okay. So that, is, that was the bridge actually why I got here and you know that's why I always I always express my, my gratitude to Coach Scott as well for helping me get here. You know, he was he was, you know, he was the one who recommended me to this agent and you know this agent is re- the agent is really good also. He has a lot of connections and stations here in Thailand. And he's been very, very helpful all throughout the year. Nice. Well, yeah. What else? What else do you want to know about his extension, Ernest? <laughs> Actually, right <laughs> now, um, uh, uh, perhaps you have a question. Well, no. I mean, you know, um, what can you say to aspiring goalkeepers? You know, like I have a son of my friend who's, uh, I think, uh, probably an upcoming uh, goalkeeper, Coach Alvin of uh, Alvin Ocampo of La Salle. Actually, he's already. Um, you know, maybe taking taking a look at him or taking care of him already. And um, what can you say to these young aspiring goalkeepers, especially that you know you're an inspiration to them, and uh, you know you've yeah. come, you've you've got, done a lot for the sport. I just keep doing what what you've been doing. You know, if you're achieving some sort of success, then it means you're in the right path. And you know, always persevere, don't give up. You know, especially this time, the pandemic is it's so difficult. You can't even work out outside. You can't. I don't know how long some of the players haven't played competitively but you know this will all pass I believe that this will all pass off soon the vaccines are already coming so just have to to um, keep working keep you know uh, making the best of the situation as I've said also earlier you know that's really just what you can do you know focus on what you can control keep uh, stay fit uh, try to to play um, in whatever way you can so that you don't get uh, very rusty and you know the, the the time will come. You know the time will come for you. The opportunities will come. You just have to be patient and hardworking. You know, and of course, just keep believing as well. Thank you for that, Patrick. My question is, how do you train now that you know um, it's it's a pandemic? Do you do you train with the team or do you train by yourself? Earlier was mentioned that uh, you're supposed to be having training today. Yeah, um, I just came from the training center today, so I did some work there, my own. Um, if but. Uh, before I signed the contract, I just recently used the facilities the last two days because I signed the contract last week. So prior to signing the contract, you know, I was just working out, working out at home because the gyms here are also closed. Um, cannot use the facilities uh, before, as I, as I said, because I didn't sign yet. So I just work out here, you know, at home. Uh, I was kicking a ball uh, against the wall. I was, you know, jogging the ball. I was doing some weights. I was with some biometrics, you know. so whatever I could I could do, I just do it, you know, because it's better than doing nothing. You know, nothing is oh, okay, ideal. Nothing is ideal at this time, you know. I cannot use all the facilities. Oh, I thought like you were one. no, you were doing some training with a PS5 or something like that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I also took the opportunity uh, with this pandemic. I took the opportunity to also enhance my my mental state. You know, I really think that it's super important. I only realized this like a few years ago. Yeah. You know, as I as I age, I think the mental state is equally important. Um, your physical attributes. You know, so I you know I started doing meditation every day and and yoga also helps. Oh, that's so great. Those things, uh, it does. It really, really helps. You know, your especially for a goalkeeper because you have to have high levels of concentration. You know, the game is ninety minutes, but on average, we all we're only involved uh, directly at the play for about eight to nine minutes. So the rest of the time, you know, you cannot allow your mind to wander. And if your, you know, your attention span is very short, then it can be a very, um, a very dangerous distraction. You know, so That's mental true. state is really important. 
very important nine minutes very for important. the team. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Unless the eight to nine minutes um increases increases when you have to go up um and help your team score a winning header goal. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> you know, if you um, think about it, the the few players they just they they run ninety minutes, eighty minutes. You know, so they don't think too much. You know, they just like. This one automatic mode, but for a goalkeeper, you're just looking at the ball the whole time, so you need to really concentrate. And yeah, and you know, um, guys, uh, dates is a big uh, basketball fan, also. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who's your team again? You mean like the Philippines? Uh, local go, go, or I mean, international? Local and international. Oh, uh, the Philippines have always been a fan of San Miguel, you know, that's great. Oh, that was my team when I was young. Si Bella, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, you know, Daniel Defonso, yeah, Daniel Miguel sure. days. Yeah. I love, I love the, watching the San Miguel team. I know. Um, <laughs> in, in NBA. I know, it's just a beer so appeal. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to Bella who, who gave us the ticket. You know, but um, <laughs> in the NBA, obviously, I watch... I'm a big fan of LeBron James, so wherever team he goes, I watch him. I watch that team. So now it's the Lakers. Yeah, we have a big game on Wednesday. I mean Thursday yeah, for yeah. you guys. With Steph Curry now and everything. But yeah. I already alarmed it in my phone. I already alarmed it in my phone. 9 a.m. time. <laughs> yeah. How about um? If you don't mind my asking, do you have any like um idol uh, goalkeepers or you know that you look up to? Um, who inspired you to become a goalkeeper? I have a lot. I have a lot of, of idol. I, I, I idolize, you know, um, David De Gea for the longest time. Um, recently, I've been, I've been watching a lot of Casper Schmeichel videos and his games. You know, I think he's really a complete goalkeeper. And, you know, um, of course, Manuel Neuer is, I think, the, the best in the world. You know. There's a lot, you know, a lot of Yano Black. I can name a lot, but you know, it's, when you watch, if you watch videos of professional goalkeepers, that already helps you at least learn something, and you know, you you kind of you kind of um, imitate the tendencies. Even Neil Neil Etheridge is an amazing goalkeeper. You know, being I don't think everybody has opportunity to watch him uh, in my in my perspective because I watch him in training. You know. First, uh, first point of view, and his 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 speed, his quickness, um, combined with his you know size, is just mind blowing. I, I I cannot understand how he can move this fast, despite his you know his big size. It's really something that every time I watch him in training, it just blows my mind. <laughs> uh, you, we you you're talking about uh, Neil already, and uh, yeah, of course you trained with him and. Uh, uh, right now, the the the, the Ascals have a good uh, goalkeeper rotation already. Um, what are the things that you took from his game that you you're bringing to uh, you now in Thailand? Um, I'm not sure if I took um one thing um all in specifically, but I I I know I know I took a lot of many things. Um, you know, I watched how he deals with crosses. I watched how he catches the ball. I watch how he um, makes a save in a certain um, angle or in a certain situation. So just by watching, by watching, by watching, by watching, and naturally, um, you just imitate him. You know, um, you you your body tends to do the same. You know, so that's why when I train in the national team, it's something that I really do. You know, I know I'm not gonna. There are many camps wherein it's almost sure that I'm going to play. But if you're a number three goalkeeper, for example, then you know very highly unlikely to play. But I look forward to training sessions because you know, when you watch people this level play, you know, just your eyes are just glued to him, and then, you know you, you kind of absorb something for sure. You kind of absorb something, and tends to come out later on. Okay, yeah. uh, right. Okay, uh, Ivan, you have a question. Can I follow up on can I follow up on Ernest's question because. If I can remember, I think it was a game between when you were still in the PFL. Your think it was against team team Stalin Laguna and Global Makati, I believe, or so sorry, you were already in Davao. 
I remember one time when he tried to go one on one with with <clears throat> Judge and Melissa, and Melissa got over you, and he had an easy goal. During the post game interview, he told me that it was uncharacteristically. So regarding on on what Ernest said, what is one? How did you improve on your decision making in terms of when to go out and and go for the ball or just stay here and just wait for for someone to strike? What did you work on when you when you came to Stan Brody? I agree that was Davo Aguilar if I'm not mistaken. Um, okay. With regards to that, that it's just experience. I think, you know, I have played the game... Rapid now. I've played the game maybe 10, 10 years, uh, more than 10 years. You know, so I made a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of good things. So eventually, it becomes um, intuition for you, you know. Um, you cannot think in the game. It's just that, okay, you go out or you stay. So this... This decision that your body makes is based from the many experiences or the many similar situations that happened before. So the more that I play, the more you know, the more situations of the same um, circumstances happen, and the better you react uh, eventually because you keep learning, learning, learning. So I think situation. That's why during the games I I don't think you know I trust my body because I would tell myself I've been playing for how many years and. You know, my body knows better than my mind. I think. You know, so I just trust my body that okay, you just do your thing. You know what to do. You've been, I've been training well. Normally, I've been tra- I, I train well um, the during the whole week before a match. So that's enough. Okay, I still have my Davo Aguilas hat here. I miss the I miss the club. I miss the club. Actually. The club as well. You know, <laughs> I love my scarf. It was really a shame, you know. I think that could have, the potential was really good. Yeah, I, I love the club. Uh, For sure. And uh, uh, right now, um, Patrick, what can you say about the uh, the goalkeeper rotation of the Ascals? Um, I didn't see the lineup um, yet, but I think Neil is there. I think Kevin Mendoza is there, and I think there's a new one from they can not familiar. Obviously, Neil being there. Be yes, massive, the, massive, the uh, Great Wall of Etridge. Yeah, it's gonna be a massive, massive factor. He's been also playing really good um, this season, and that's a good thing because he just finished um, the season, so it's in good form, still in good shape. Um, Kevin Mendoza also has been really doing well in Malaysia. You know, I follow him in social media. And, you know, I see his performance and so we're good friends, and he's been doing really well. He has adjusted well in, in the Malaysian league. The other goalkeeper, I cannot say anything because I don't know him. So I think the goalkeeper uh, position is is super strong as usually in <laughs> this camp. Okay, Ivan, Has someone contacted you to to join the Astros training camp or none? Um, not sure if I if I if I could if I could really say this, but I was in, I was really called up. I was really called up, um, but you know, there's so many factors that that uh, made me think twice to come. You know, it was not a matter of of not being committed to the national team, but at that time, uh, I hadn't sorted out my contract yet, so I made that first a priority to be able to sign with the team because obviously that's my you know that's my livelihood. That was put on the table. Um, the quarantine was also very difficult because. Uh, based on the schedule, the earliest time I could be back here in Thailand was uh, June. Ah, sorry, July 1. and the Thai league will start July 31. So that was not gonna be enough time for a preseason. You know, if I was coming, if I was coming from Azcals directly here to training, then it would have been perfectly fine. But I would be coming from national team training and then two weeks quarantine, so there's no training, no exercise, and then I will start preseason again, and you know that will probably be a cause of injury later on because the year is very long it's very grueling season um so based on many factors and obviously also my fiance you know the papers you know, it's very difficult to to start it out so with all of those factors i you know i have permission on the management to to sit this one out and you know i think they understand my situation So I told them that you know the next camp I will be 100% ready if if needed I'll be 100% ready because 
Um, I'm assuming at that time, obviously, I will, I will be contracted with the club. Uh, hopefully, the COVID situation or the COVID situation will also be lighter. So it will be a better um, chance for me to go. So, so do you, so I believe the Astas are set to depart today to Doha. So will you be missing them a lot? Especially they're, they're, they're going to begin their training camp in Doha. Yeah, of course. You know, I miss a lot of the, the players, even the staff. You know, I miss the staff, which is your kid Manchester, you know, these people. Um, I was looking forward to see them. I haven't seen the actors for a long time. Um, but, you know, the situation is out of our control. It's an idea. Nobody wanted it. We just have to be patient. You know, hopefully, later on the year, Suzuki Cup, I'm not sure when it is. Hopefully, I'll be able to join the squad. Um, but, you know, despite me not being there, I, I'm, I'm going to be supporting them for sure. I'll be watching the game um, in, 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 in live streaming. Right. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Pepsi, you have more questions for uh, Patrick. We're about to reach our... <laughs> no, I just wish you all the best in your career. And... Uh... Yeah. Can't pronounce your team. It's kind of difficult to pronounce, but uh, good luck. <laughs> what? Thank you. Thank you so much. Super no, good. Not... <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, Patrick, uh, you know, we could have you. Uh, I hope we could have you uh, with uh, with Reichelt here soon. So you can have more stories about you in, in, in Thailand as well. But um, right now... Um, uh, we'll give you the floor uh, if you want to thank anyone, if you want to greet anyone right now. Uh, now, this is the time to do it. I just want to, you know, probably greet the Filipino football fans or the, and the Philippine football community. Um, I hope you're all safe, first of all. I hope everything's doing okay. Um, you know, I'm, I hope everybody stays patient. You know, even I'm looking forward to national team games, the PFL games, and everything. And I hope the situation in the country yeah. um, gets better, you know, with regards to the pandemic. I think that's first and foremost, you know, um, the football, you know, will, will just follow. But, you know, just, the, um, just the safety is, for me, is the first and foremost. Hopefully everybody's safe. And then when, you know, we get past this, then the football will follow everybody. Everybody's ready to go, so... We're all looking forward to that. Okay, uh, we'll, I'll, we will now give our co-hosts a chance to uh, say their uh, greetings. Ivan, you're the you're the first one here. You're the newest guy. Yeah, thank you, Ernest. Thank you, Patrick, for 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 joining, and thank you, as well, Ernest, for giving the chance to join this podcast. And I hope that. Uh, that that I will support the Astros in this in their journey to the World Cup, and I hope that you will also see. Ernest, no, no, I will ask you, Ivan. Hello. Uh, anyway, okay. Ah, uh, okay, na Ivan. No, no, no. Di ko lam na par na wala eh. No, parang anyway. Uh, Peps, how about you? Um, anyway, Brian Yalong wants to uh say hi. Uh, hi, Peps. Barangay Green Hills boys are watching with me right now. Oh, thank you, thank you. I have fans. <laughs> but anyway, Patrick, uh, thank you so much for joining us here once again. Again, uh, good luck in your career in Thailand. And uh, I'd like to greet, of course, my friends from the uh, CSA Vets. Uh, we're all in the La Sala alumni. Uh, we're all looking forward. It's nice to know that uh, we have a, a La Salle graduate who's uh, going places in the world of football. So again, congratulations. Okay, Belay, how about you? From uh, um, from whatever city you are right now, <laughs> <laughs> from from whatever time zone you're in, um, no, uh, yeah, you know, they, it's I I know that it's been a tough year, especially with the situation. I'm I I know you haven't been home, uh, for I don't know over a year. I'm I'm guessing, and I know it's difficult, but I we really appreciate all the sacrifice you've made. You know, I, I like and I mentioned it earlier. I really feel so proud when I see at your games that 
your fans are holding up the Philippine flag and just um knowing like the journey you took it's like a pathway that's accessible to our kids our kids at the YFL our kids um in the schools in Rifa can take um it's possibly one of the most concrete that um our kids can see uh pathway all the way to the professional so um I just want to know we really appreciate it and we really support you and we're behind you all the way and all the best and good luck in your upcoming season. Uh, we are very, very, very proud of you. So thank you for joining us today. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Bella. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay, thank you so much, Patrick. And before anything else, we will uh, try to uh, recognize our sponsors right now. Pacquiao 3-in-1, Kaping Barako with Malungay, and Orange Malungay Orange Iced Tea uh, with HG Guyabano Drink. Ang dating iced tea and orange juice, may bago na, may malunggay, malunggay iced tea and malunggay orange litro pack. Available at Mercury Drug, South Supermarket, Robinson Supermarket, LCC, Rustan Supermarket, Lazada, and Shopee. For those who want to be resellers, please email sales at orange.com.ph. And with that, this is another episode of Banana Cake. Please do subscribe to our channel in YouTube and like our page in Facebook so you would know when and uh, who is our next guest here in Banana Cake. And also, please like the page of the Youth Football League as well. And with that, my name is Ernest Hernandez. And we uh, just a simple message in times like these is just to stay safe and God bless. <laughs>